Tommy Chong. Welcome to the show, brother. All right, hold on. Before we get into this episode, I just wanted to say how much this moment meant to me. This was a dream come true. This is something I thought about ever since I seen Up in Smoke for the very first time. And yes, I've watched it dozens and dozens of times. Imagining a day that I would get to meet, hang out with, and smoke with Tommy Chong. Guys, today was the day. And it's the reason why I decided to make this interview right here the official first episode of the Homegrow TV talk show. Pretty much a podcast, and it's going to be available on all the podcast streaming platforms. So yeah, Spotify, podcasts on Apple Music, everywhere you listen to your podcast, Homegrow TV talk show is going to be available. So it would mean the world to me, guys, if you took out your phone right now before we got this started, went to your preferred podcast platform, and subscribed to the Homegrow TV talk show. And I also want to thank AC Infinity for sponsoring this episode. I've been using their inline fan system in my grow tent for years now. And recently, I switched over a couple of my tents to their advanced grow kits. They come with the ion board LED, complete inline ventilation system and carbon filter, clip fans, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi controller to integrate everything together, and all wrapped by the thickest tent I've ever tested on the channel. They also include fabric pots, trellis nets, hangers, duct clamps, plant ties, pruning snips, and even foil tape. This is absolutely a great price for everything that comes in this kit. I have a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. And the discount code HOMEGROWTV will save you a nice chunk of change at checkout. Thanks again to AC Infinity, and let's get this started. And thank you so much for gracing us with your presence here today, brother. How you doing? My, I'm doing really well. Really well. You're Could looking do better. Great. Yeah, you're looking great. You're looking colorful too as well, man. I can tell the weather's doing good over there and, and feeling vibey. Well, yeah, well, I, I was in Greece uh, last week, and uh, I got my share of the sun. That's what <laughs> so, it is. There. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was nice. Dude, well, welcome to Homegrow TV here at Homegrow. We have a lot of people that are following the channel that are essentially that homegrowers growing their own from home. And we're going to cover some amazing topics today. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun, but I wanted to start the show with this question right here. Tommy, what's your opinion about those growing their own at home? Well, it's why we did our best to make it legal, you know, it was so we could grow our own at home. Uh, because this this plant was made for people to grow their own at home. <laughs> you know, uh, all it needs is a little, uh, some good soil, sun, and love, and, um, and you know, and the seed, and the, uh, that's it. That's all you have to do. And then you, very little to do with the plant after, you know. Right. If you want to separate the males from the females that's one thing but if not it's a magical plant it, it'll just grow all the medicine you need in a lifetime it could uh, you could wear what it grows i mean it's it's a phenomenal plant <laughs> and it's been a gift from god since the beginning and uh, it's really our connection to the plant world you know is is the cannabis plant so yeah uh, I, I think uh, if more people grew at home, <laughs> there'd be less problem. There'd be less trouble in the universe. I totally agree with you, man. And that, and that's again our mission here at Homegrow TV. And that's a lot of the work that we're putting into it. We take a lot of strains grown from seed to harvest and show how easy it really is. And I think it's mind blowing for a lot of people growing their first plants at home. For those realizing now that it's legal, it's something able to do. It really is quite easy, and I think you nailed it on the head. So, guys, you heard it. It's officially approved, which is obvious and isn't surprised by anyone, but Tommy Chong approves grown at home to grow your own medicine. Let's, Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Let's get into a little bit of old-school strain talk because I'll tell you something right now. My dad was a fan of yours before I was even a twinkling little, you know, shine or glisten in his eye. Right. And my mom also wanted to to say what's up tonight. A big fan of yours as well. And so now you're talking to their, their son, who's a huge fan of yours. You have smoked so many different strains in your time. I can only assume and sampled so many different flavors. So I wanted to take a second to talk about some old school strain talks. And one of the first things was like, what are some of the old classic strains that someone like myself, 
aren't familiar with or some classic land races that really stand out to you um, from the beginning times or, or from the era when you first got into weed and heard about strain names? Well, the only strain, it was all done by uh, where it was from. You know, Mexico, Mexican weed, you got Thai weed, you know, you got weed from Cambodia. But, Colombian uh, gold. Colombian gold, yeah. Acapulco gold, Colombian gold, yeah, yeah. Uh, Durban, South uh -huh. African. Right. Durban poison. What was it Durban poison? Yeah. Um, yeah, they all had one thing in common. They all got, uh, got you pretty messed up if uh, if you were lucky enough to have enough, you know, right. or to have some. I was very lucky when I started because I, uh, uh, you know, I was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and uh, it had to be carried in from uh, California, as it were at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was very rare. You know, after the first joint, I, I don't think I got another joint for another, oh, good, maybe six months. Wow. You know, uh, before, because there was no, I mean, we weren't connected at all. I was in a jazz uh, club and, and the owner of the jazz club turned me on to a joint and a Lenny Bruce album, uh -huh. <laughs> comedy no album. Yeah, but, uh, and that was um, Mexican uh, with the seeds, you know, with seeds. I know the sense of me, it means without seeds, but the, back in the day, stems and seeds that you don't <laughs> need. <laughs> yeah. So, so in, in that time, what would be like, so in that, the first strains that you would have remember hearing about were those land races then? Was the Colombian gold? Was the tide stick, for example? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, it was Mexican first. Got and, you. and then we then, then we got into the 60s and when we got into the 60s and in Vietnam then then it became Thai stick you know got it you became from Thai Thailand and and uh, and uh, yeah as long as the, the war in Asia was going on you know we got a nice supply of uh, a good uh, Colombian or 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 Thai Thai weed in that and right. then it, it then it kind of went back to the Mexican uh and then by then canada was growing uh you know so we had bc bud and, and once once we started growing it up in canada that was it i don't think we even thought about <laughs> anything else man. no doubt uh, that bc bud man woo. yeah well it, it, no and then don't forget uh alaska thunderfuck that, that was okay. uh, yeah that and was, so that's uh, one coming back now that strain i've heard that now with new seed banks and different breeders launching that strain again so that's a classic strain that alaskan thunderfuck me as a grower now that's something that is coming from again yeah those old school. oh i didn't know that yeah uh the alaskan thing was so good because it grew within you know the the three months there it was incredible like right and so the buds were like huge, huge and full, so, so powerful, so beautiful. You know, I never, uh, yeah, people, you know, uh, what's your favorite strain? There's no favorite in right. the marijuana business. It's whatever was given to you at the time. <laughs> that totally. has to be your favorite strain. Right. And, and, and it was like, uh, uh, high times in the cannabis cup that invented really uh, the blueberry and and and, and gorilla goo and glue and all these weird names. And right. the only reason they did that was for the to win the best bud or the most potent bud or whatever. And I found out that whoever paid the judges the most money was the one that won. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, you know, you can't, I, at least I can't judge it. You know, I, I, even the taste of say, Oh, this got uh, what like blueberries. It tastes like blueberries. I don't, I've never been that sensitive or. Right. I wasn't expecting a taste i was expecting a a buzz you know mm -hmm. right. <laughs> expecting yeah so i i 
I, you know, a lot, a lot of that stuff, you know, writers have to put tags on everything. Yeah, in, in yeah order of course. To, yeah, it's, so a lot of it is just writer's imagination. No doubt. My goodness. So one of those old school strains, and again, I feel like it's something we're starting to see now, Tommy, is a lot of these breeders having an appreciation for these land races and the history of it and making sure that they preserve it and that it's something that, you know, growers like myself just come into the game or a lot of people from the channel have hopefully the chance to experience what it was like, you know, to grow a certain land race or to see a certain land race or maybe to have its effects and taste. So a specific question I have for you, I have this beautiful bud right here in front of me. And this right here, sir, is a Mendocino skunk from Tommy Chong's collection. We're going to get into that sec into that in a second. But my question is, the strain skunk, has that played a major role as one of those strains that popped up in a certain era? Or was it a strain that was something that played a major role in your life? Well, the, the skunk came from, it smelled like cat pee. Yeah. It smelled like skunk. In fact, I used to grow weed you know, my son and I used to grow some weed and my wife never knew about it. And she'd always complain about, oh, that cat peed in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, they'd be looking all over for the cat pee. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, it was just the, the, the smell of the, the bud. That's all. No way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funny story on that. And, Dad, I know you're going to be watching this at some point. My dad, you know, this was in the age where we weren't, like, I didn't know he was a fan of of Cheech and Chong. He didn't know I was really a fan, but he knew I was, like, partaking in, in uh, recreation as well as medicinal uh, effects of, of cannabis. And he found a little ball of hash out on his patio one day. And he was, uh, what he, what he, he grabbed it and he looked at it and he said, yeah, that's, uh, that's cat shit right there. Put it in his pocket and just walked off. And he didn't want to let any other the kids around know that, that is, <laughs> that's not cat shit. That's some Moroccan hash that your older brother <laughs> dropped on the floor last night that I can let you kids know that this is, this, this is cat, you know, that this is hash. So he said cat shit. And I find that such a funny story from cat piss to cat shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so your dad just collects cat shit, yeah, puts yep. it in his pocket. Right in his pocket, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, whoops, accidentally funny. another one fell right in his pocket there but yeah it was kind of like i seen him do it i was like oh shit he's he found the hash it was kind of like an under you know unspoken uh agreement after that but a uh, funny sidebar on the skunk so skunk was a what was something that stood out to you as far as the smell and, and your wife thinking again this is cat piss yeah, was this something yeah, yeah. That, uh, what's the what sorry was this a strain that that was um, you know, popping around a lot. This was something that you were growing at the time. No, it was something that it. it we, I, I'm not really sure. I, to the to this day, I, I'm not a really good grower because uh, you know, uh, eyesight. And uh, when you get messed up, it's hard to remember shit. You know, so yeah. so so it's a combination of all that stuff. And besides, when I I was a musician, you know. And mm -hmm. we used to buy all our, our weed from a little, uh, a dealer used to come by with these little pinners. Uh -huh. And they were little marijuana cigarettes rolled, made out of marijuana dust. Oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah. they were uh -huh. the skinniest joints on the planet. And he sold them for a buck a piece. Uh -huh. But that would get you high enough to play a set, you know, like uh, <laughs> uh, a couple hours of music. And that would that would be fine. That's all you would need, you know. Right. And so I, I so that little skinny joint really symbolized a, a lot of things in my life. Uh, number one, that uh, I, you never got too stoned to the point, you know, where you would forget your music. You know, mm -hmm. that that was the worst thing. Uh, I've seen that happen uh, right. on, on on the on the stage. You know, where they got too stoned, they couldn't play. Uh, but but. But it gave us enough. Well, look, we got discovered by Motown, right. you know, uh, by Barry, by first Diana Ross and uh, Barry Gordy. Uh, and it was pot induced music. <laughs> you know, yes. we never had a name for the band. We never knew half the songs that we were singing, the titles of them. You know, we knew, you know, the singer sang them and we played them. But 
we knew that we got high every night before we played. <laughs> we knew that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something I, I'm listening to so many of your interviews. And again, and being such a fan from the age when I seen your movie at 16, 17 years old to the role that it's played in my life now. I think one of the most amazing things I've heard you say, Tommy, is like you don't get high like I forget the exact words I even have written down somewhere, but like you get high to get like to get there and to get that creative part, but you don't get high to get just completely out of control or you don't smoke to get too high, but you smoke till it's just enough. It was something like that. Uh, that you yeah. Said on, on yeah. One of these. Well, 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 what it is, is, is that the, the spirit uh, of creativity, let's call it, gets excited when you get high and and he kind of nudges you uh, you know and 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 that's all it is that's all you need and sometimes all you need is just talking about it it's mm -hmm. amazing because body memory is something else you know a smell can put you in a whole different world because of the memories that you have you know and that's why perfume is was so powerful you know, uh, from the beginning, they invented perfume because everything, the real life smelled so bad that the only way you could uh, deal with people and in, in, in uh, cities and the smell was to have a hanky full wow. of perfume, you know, that you'd held at your nose, you know, and, and, and your senses are so acute. And so, so when you get high, uh, Every you you become aware. Yes. Uh, first of all, you become in the moment. Presence. This is very important. The moment, a moment in someone's life, can be so fleeting that years will go by and you haven't really noticed a moment yet. But yet, if you're doing something so incredible. Uh, or watching the birth of a child or or creating or, or something that's so monumental, that moment can be so small, but yet so huge in your mind, you know. And, and that's what part, at least with me, that's what it did with me. You know, it would make the good moments forever, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it would make me learn from the bad moments, because th this is amazing that I found out, you know, being a comedian, the truth, the truth, no matter how horrible it is, the truth itself will make you laugh. Right? Yes. The truth itself. When, when you hear something that's truthful, your first impulse is to laugh. And that's why comedians, see, we have such a ball on stage because all we have to do is find that truth that everybody, that is sort of unexpected, mm -hmm. but it's true. And once you hit that truth, boom, you release these, this knowledge and this, this feeling of, of, of familiarity. You know, yes, yes, I know what it means. And that's what pot. It helps because it does. It 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 uh, it doesn't mess with your memory. It does all those things, you know, the negative things that people say. But if you look at it in a positive way, as a musician say, all of a sudden all you hear is the tune. That's all you hear. You don't hear anything else, or you hear the you hear what you need to hear. That's what I'm saying. You're not distracted in any way. Now. If you're doing too many things at the same time, like driving home, for instance, <laughs> you might get lost <laughs> because you might get too involved in a, in a moment of, of, oh, what? That's so beautiful. Uh, I never noticed that before. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're going, oh, shit, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Wow. What a magical way of explaining that one little sentence that I got to hear on, on one of your conversations. And for those of you listening to this, 
I truly recommend that you dive through a lot of Tommy's different interviews that he's done. Um, me personally, I've seen so many, whether it's complex and we're doing a high production interview, or whether he's coming on a channel like this here at Homegrow TV and speaking to some of us, there's so much gold nuggets. And that was most certainly one of them that I'm definitely going to capture and remember for the long term, Tommy. That was beautiful. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, again, you know, it's all part induced. You know, my whole life is, it really is. Um, you know, we, by the way, we've got a new. Uh, uh, what you some got? gummies. They're nice. gummies. They're called. Yeah. They're called Cruz. They're called Cruz. Now you can pick these up in some places in Walgreen, in in these uh, not not necessarily uh, 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 what do you call it the, the dispensaries. Yeah, but you can. Uh, there's some drug stores. There's some Seven uh, Elevens that carry this because they're it's hemp products. Gotcha. And you know how you know how hemp can be sold everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, these are hemp products. Now, these hemp are, are kind of cool because they have a three point something THC. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, nice. they got T THC, but hemp is THC. Well, I it's exactly not just yeah. CBD. It's yeah, THC. listen to the history of it, and again, guys, diving into some of these interviews, like hearing the history of it. And this was you uh, that I heard this from, like. We used to call cannabis hemp before cannabis was even a word, was it not? Yes. Well, no, cannabis was always a word. It was uh, the the, uh, uh, the, Latin the, the Latin word. The Latin word. Yeah, the Latin word for 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 the for the plant. But hemp it was the industrial word that they yeah. used, and and the government at one time you know mandated everybody grow hemp. You know, all the founding fathers. You know, from uh, 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 Benjamin Franklin, all the all the boys grew hemp on their farms, uh, and it was very important the crop on their farms. Right, and and of course the slaves and the ones that that worked the hemp fields, they knew the the magical properties behind it too. You know, and right. and they used it. They used it all the time uh, because you can't grow hemp without having THC in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And 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 what we did, what we've done is managed to separate the female from the male, and so now you can have just plants with just more THC than others. But uh, with my my product here, we got just enough THC in there uh, to to so you can feel it, yeah. and it's got uh, CBD, which is a, a great medicine for aches and pains and growing and pains Thank and yeah. for for all all sorts of uh, problems health health problems and and because it has enough thc it it'll give you that buzz it'll give you right. that little that little uh oh you know that yeah little, oh shit why am i feeling like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> totally and and even myself as a as a consumer too of just cbd products which i absolutely love i think it's it's a great thing to to supplement and add in for so many different situations but seeing the effects in the studies too of having just a little bit of thc in there to balance with what you're doing with that cbd um I, again i i think there's a lot more science that's going to come out on it but i do think that it's a good combination to have over just 100 percent pure cbd yeah and and we're 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 you know, we're, we're following the letter of the law, but these Cheech and Chong Cruz gummies no are definitely the most potent on, on the mar market right now. And we just released them. They just got released. Thank and Because uh, my CBD products, uh, the, the the nice dreams uh, and the, the good vibes, this is the yep. good vibes, and the nice dreams put you to sleep, good vibes uh, wake you up. Uh they're filled with all sorts of, uh, uh, what do you call it, you know, material that, that will help your, help your growth and Got you. help your, uh, help everything. Because you know what it is? And, I, you know, it's funny, I, I spent two days now uh, doing uh, commercials for the, the crews, but they never got around to me saying, that one of the benefits of of the cannabis product 
is it makes you uh, appreciate life. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. it makes you, uh, when you, instead of being a critic, you become a cheerleader, you know, yes. and, and that that's so important because so many people on the planet, they're their own worst enemy because of, a, of that critical uh, part of the brain that can take control right. and get out of control, yep. you know, and, and make the wrong decisions. Because when, once you make wrong decisions, you're like a, 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 a like a, an architect or a builder. Say you're building a thing and you make the wrong measurements and you believe instead of checking them, you believe that the wrong measurements are, are true, yet nothing's fitting, nothing works. And right. so you look for other reasons to blame why things aren't working. The product is inferior, da, da, da. But all it is really is that your wrong dimensions, your wrong way of thinking. And that's what wrong thinking does to you. Right. You see. So, so again, the cannabis eliminates that critical part because a lot of times people come up with answers because they're afraid to let anybody know they don't know the answer. And so rather than to, to, the fear of being ignorant or being seen as ignorant makes you lie. And when you lie, oh, I can't get over the importance of how, how bad lying is for, for you. Right. Because you just throw everything out of kilter, off kilter. You know, you just, everything's wrong now. Nothing's really fitting you know you got the wrong schedule up there you know so you're expecting something that's not there because you're there either too soon or not soon enough and that's what lies do to you Uh lies put you lies put you into a a land of mistakes and then one mistake will lead to another and so on and so on and so what I've been telling people on my cameos, especially the older ones that you know, have birthdays, give me some advice. I said, my, my advice for people, especially uh, older people, is to don't be so ready to talk, but be always ready to listen. Interesting. Be- because when you listen, you hear things. If you're talking at the same time someone else is talking, you're not listening. And they're not listening, obviously. Mm-hmm. So if one of you, or just you alone, if you if you concentrate on listening, then you not only hear what you're supposed to hear, but you allow your brain itself. You're, we're a computer. You know, you allow this computer to to align itself with with you know you get in tune. Musicians do all this time. You know, uh, the first thing you do when you play anything is you get tuned up. Mm-hmm. Let's tune up. Are you out of tune? You into you got to tune up. Mm-hmm. Well, the humans that's what we have to do too. And a lot of us we just go about our business untuned. We're not tuned up. But yet right. we're blabbing away. We're 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 going through the motions. You know, a yeah. lot of people do that. A lot of people do that in a marriage too. You know, that's not working. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they will they will fake fake this and lie about that and fake and lie and 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 pretty soon it builds up so much so that both parties eventually will, let's just let's let, let's just find another life you know right that's just part so so it's very important that that when you listen it's like your computer or your phone when something ain't right what's the first thing you do you turn it off you turn it off Mm -hmm. you wait a few seconds then you turn it on and when you turn it on everything gets recalculated re, re focused you yep. know 
and it, it falls into place, boom, and it turns on when it's ready. Right. And then, boom, you turn it on. Oh, the mistake's gone. Everything's good. Okay. Right. Let's go again. So, so this this is what I learned in in in, in my uh, all all the years I've been living. You know, is and and the masters have been prophets have been preaching this forever. Mm-hmm. You know, but first of all, and and this is what I learned too is is the Lord's prayer. By the way, is the magical rhyme that if you follow it to the letter, everything you need to know about this existence is in the Lord's Prayer. Everything. For instance, our Father, our Father, everybody's Father, Mm -hmm. not Mother, Father. Why Father? Because He's, the Father's one that, the seed. The seed is from the father okay Mm -hmm. now the seed is accepted by the mother and raised by the mother and created by the mother but the seed so our father who art in heaven that's the second one our father who art in heaven you know not Mm -hmm. our father who art in earth is every that looking over your shoulder thinking you know watching everything you do no our father who art in heaven, heaven. Yes, now, heaven is the opposite. Here's what I found out. Heaven is the opposite of this uh, existence that we're in now, this physical existence called mm-hmm. uh, the universe. Uh, in ours is the Milky Way universe, Mil- Milky Way galaxy, but we're in this universe called uh, the Milky Way. That's a physical universe. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the physical universe, there's all sorts of turmoil, strife, conflict, wars between between oxygen and nitrogen, you know, (laughs) explosions. Everything's happening. And out of these explosions come these planets and earths and suns, suns, balls of gas are, are formed out of these explosions. Okay, what's the opposite of everything? Nothing. The spiritual world is so small, it's smaller than nothing. Yet, the spiritual world, which is called heaven, is where God is. See, God, who art in heaven, art in the spiritual world or really existing only in our mind in our mind Mm -hmm. hallowed be thy name think about this the name of god himself think about how holy that name is when you swear to become a citizen you swear god yeah you know you swear Mm -hmm. to god when you go to court, you swear to God. When you get married, you swear to God. Anything that considers swearing, why? Because that name is hallowed. Hallowed be thy name. That means we're saying, I swear to the Almighty mm-hmm. that whatever I'm doing is true or true. And if you break that thing, there's penalties, as Trump found out. You know, yeah. you don't mess with you don't mess with God and hold the Bible upside down and, and with, right. without <laughs> some, some shit falling on your head right. really soon. Hell be a name, thy kingdom come, thy God's kingdom, not ours, God's kingdom. Thy will be done. Whatever God wants or his plan will be uh-huh. done on earth. As it is in heaven, yes. No, in heaven, there's no, uh, there's no want, need, or desire. Therefore, heaven is a perfect, peaceful place to be. And when I, my spiritual book leader says, um, he said, you'd be surprised who's in heaven. You, 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 you'd find. Donald Trump in heaven. You'd find mm-hmm. Hitler in heaven. You'd find the worst of the worst in heaven. Why? Because heaven is a 
pure place that only the pure go. Right. And because we are, we are, uh, each of us, we're, we're immortal uh, people, you know, entities, energy. We, we, we've always been here. You've always been here. I've always been here in one form or another. And so, yeah, there is uh, birth and rebirth and death, birth, rebirth. There is. There has to be. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way you can get through eternity. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get through eternity if there's, oh, all of a sudden, that's it. It's over. Right. <laughs> no doubt. My goodness, man. It makes me think immediately. I did something good in the in the life before this to be hanging out right now with one of my idols, one of my heroes, chilling out and soon <laughs> hopefully sparking one of these bad suckers of the skunk. But I wanted to bring it back uh, to something that you said I thought was so relevant to a lot of the conversation that, that we just had there, and that's being able to laugh at yourself. I feel like when you talked about marriage and, and avoiding the problems there, when you talked about certain things and uh, lying, for example, if we were able to laugh at ourselves, we were able to smoke a little doobie. And again, like it is for you, it is for me. This is a beautiful medicine for me to drop the ego and go, fuck, I guess I am a total idiot. Did I totally like, did I leave that and just laugh at myself <laughs> instead of building up an argument and an excuse and whose fault is it yeah. other than mine? Yeah. I get, I mean, shit, I guess, it, and how many times have we had fights or, you know, had an argument in our life and then all of a sudden gone, Jesus, what were we even fighting about, man? Like, <laughs> like what the hell? Absolutely. I was being an idiot, you know, I was edging God out this whole time. And um, well, 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 can, can you go ahead? Go ahead. And, so, and sorry, questions. just to seal that off, I just to seal it off. And I, I feel like it, it brings in perfectly to what you were saying as far as like ego and you're talking about God. I feel like ego is simply just another abbreviation for edging God out. When we build up our ego and we're here with ego, I didn't do this, this wasn't me, blah, blah, blah. We're not able to laugh at ourselves. Well, then maybe we're edging God out and we're not experiencing the life of bliss and living with God and living in, in well, this. Well, we're doing, we're, we're doing two things. Number one, we're searching. But you also got to remember, this is where I contradict myself a lot because, it, again, it's true. Uh, Everything I said is absolutely true. However, everything that is happening is happening for a reason. Yes. You see, uh, Trump and, and the insurrection, that happened for a reason. That was bound to happen. We were heading in that direction. Why? In the physical world, you only learn from your mistakes. Think about that. You own, we're here to make mistakes. If we, if we weren't here to make mistakes, we wouldn't be here because mm -hmm. there's no reason to be here unless you have to, to learn something. And the only way you learn anything is by mistakes. Like a little, I watched my little granddaughter learn how to walk and I watched her make mistakes after <laughs> mistake, after mistake, fall down, bump. And the great thing about being that young, they got endorphins in their bodies so they don't feel the pain like, like we do. <laughs> but they're always making mistakes. They, she thinks that, you know, she can uh, do certain things and she can't yet. And then she slowly learns, okay, I, I won't raise my head up too high because last time I did that, I bumped into a table. So now when I get up, I will just <laughs> go up so far, and then I'll get out of, the, out of there. Uh, and, yeah, and and watching her learn. Well, that's what we humans are here to do. We're Beautiful. here to make mistakes and to learn from the mistakes. You see. Now, like I said about the the Lord's Prayer, that's the same. That that's been around forever, and it wasn't until just lately that personally that I found out. I, I broke it down thanks to my the spiritual book that I'm that I'm reading. Uh, I uh, it, it, it sort of gave me a little uh, thing to do it, so I broke started breaking stuff down and looking around and realizing, you know, the answers for everything is all in front of us. Always has been. There are no secrets, yes, sir. none whatsoever. That's why when when this UFO. Uh, uh, the, these people, you know, they believe in UFOs and that. 
Mm-hmm. And they asked me about UFOs, and I said, sure, sure, they exist. And then they said, what are they? I said, well, according to experience of what we've seen, I imagine they're drones. Because uh-huh. a drone can give you more information than a human or a, or some other being. And if you're that evolved that you're flying around a UFO, that you don't have to be in it. Just like right. we're not in that drone that's in Mars right now, right? You yeah. know, you know, yeah. or the drone yeah, flying well, above the grow. You know, the other day flying my little drone, just flying that sucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. why wouldn't the UFOs be drones? And the guys, <laughs> where are they from? Yeah, uh, who, where are they from? Well, who knows? You know, maybe the drones know. You know, some right. other dimension could be some other dimension or probably is another dimension. You mm-hmm. know, listening to all the reports that these airline pilots and everybody have, you mm-hmm. know. So so there are no secrets. Just like I, I read a thing about the, the pyramids, you know, yeah. and then I, then I watched a show about, you know, the aliens from outer space that came. And, ancient aliens. You know, if you look, yeah. look at ancient aliens. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and I started thinking, you know, because what they want to do, they want to take the credit away from humans. Right. They want to make, they want to, there, there's, there's certain people, that, I guess they're simplistic or whatever, but they want us to, to believe that back in the day, you know, there, we had cavemen and they would drag women by the hair over to their cave and, you know, and they would, they were uh, Neanderthal. Well, they've yeah. done some studies, and especially with the art world. And they found some art that if, if these guys were, were were Neanderthal and subhuman, yeah. they made some they made some pretty phenomenal art, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and their weapons and that they, they had to make weapons to kill down big mastodon dinosaurs and, and see that's and why either the that. aliens came in or either the mushrooms came in you know or, or maybe both or maybe the mushrooms or maybe the mushrooms were brought by the aliens I think I don't know. <laughs> no, again, mushrooms are a product of the earth. Yeah, beautiful. The fungi, fungi. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. It's the most intelligent uh, species on the planet. Mm-hmm. And and they com- and you communicate through fungi. That's why yes. mushrooms are so so incredible. Uh, yes. you know, that's why we have magic mushrooms. And yeah. that, you know, and what is magic mushroom? Fungi. Yeah. That, that grows from from uh, little plant material. No, everything on on this earth uh, is of God, yes. and and communicates with us. Always communicates with us. I I, I learned a, I I read a thing about rats. Mm-hmm. First of all, the reason rats are around humans. Is because humans are so filthy that rats are really the janitor that comes and cleans <laughs> up the shit. No doubt, right? Yeah, <laughs> that that's what the rats are. Now, yeah. are are they vicious and horrible and like they get depicted? No, not at all. In fact, they did a study and they found rats have a sense of humor. <laughs> they play- <laughs> Do you believe that they play tricks on each other? No, they no. do. They play tricks on it. What kind of tricks are they playing, these guys? Well, probably food tricks. You yeah. Know, okay. Or or, or or they'll play hide and seek and uh, got you. But you know, something yeah. developed enough for them to be able to but to play the. They and that's why they use rats a lot uh, for humans. Yeah. You know that's why the laboratory rats was te- everything's tested on rats. They tried testing on monkeys, but that was so in, inhumane, Oof. you know, that, yeah. that it, and monkeys are so close to, to the humans, the rats, you know, they, and, and they multiply faster. Right. Rats, rats are, are that I found because uh, we had, a, when I moved into this house, I started keeping my, my uh, rescue uh, shepherd. Mm. Uh, no, he was a Labrador. On, on the roof, I wanted to wanted him to be an outdoor dog. Yeah, and so I, I and I have a flat roof, and so I had him on the roof, and I had his food out on the roof. Now, food on a roof is in in Hollywood, California, or Pacific Palisades is not a good idea. 
because they've got rats in Hollywood that are that are have been breeding with gerbils, and no, so no. they're not only they're not only rats; they're they're bigger, and they got beautiful fur coats. <laughs> oh different my color god! Coats. Yeah, I had an infestation in my house, so thick that I could hear them running on the roof no. in, in, in between the, the thing. And I thought they were pigeons, you know, because they <laughs> yeah, felt like, yeah. like pigeons. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. In your seen. positive mind, you're thinking pigeons, my, right? These happy pigeons. In my pigeons. positive mind. <laughs> and then we, we finally hired a ratter. And we had so many that came up to feed on the rooftop that they were coming out of the light sockets. Oh my God, dude! Oh, but what a story. they they weren't they weren't dirty or filthy. They were clean. They right. lived in Smart. they lived in the Palisades. They were yeah. like gerbils. They were part gerbils. Yeah. They were different <laughs> color and everything. Now, what I did, I would trap. I would trap and release them. Okay. And so I'd, I'd trap them and bring them into the into the country because. You know the coyotes need to eat. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and, and because that's all they feed. You know, so I was, I was catching them. I, I, I killed a few, but for the most part, you don't want to kill them because better to take them and release them, and then, then you don't have the, to clean up anything. Yeah, and no and, and then, I, but I learned to bring the dog inside, and uh-huh. then the food and everything right. else, and then we hired. Uh, that was before we had a housekeeper. And then we finally hired a housekeeper, and then she's Mexican, so she knew how to how to yeah. run a house in California, you know. <laughs> but but the rats rats are here for a purpose. Yeah. And and by the way, cats. Here's one about cats. Cats domesticated humans. Uh huh. The reason cats started hanging out with humans is that the humans were so filthy they attracted the rats and the mice. And the and the other vermin. That's right. And I so heard this. If, if, yes. if the cats wanted to eat, they would come and hang out with the humans. And so wow. next thing you know, they're purring and they're cuddling up against the humans. And little kittens are so cute. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And they have this little then, defense system for make us to want to keep these little suckers. Eh? These cats ooh, over generations. They get so purring, cute. And they're purring. Heartstrings. Hey, cuddle. And, oh, yeah. they're so cute when they play. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it, in the Middle East, like in in Egypt, and that they're they're considered holy, and they yeah. they they run feral around. And the reason is is that they keep the the bug population under control. Right. Other than that, so you would purpose. have horrible cockroaches, and you'd have all sorts of uh, those those things. But the cats, they keep everything clean. Wow. So we got to appreciate we got to appreciate all that stuff. And so, and mm-hmm. and, and, I, and I think again. That's why the weed smells like cat pee because it's not a bad it's not a bad smell. That's a good smell. <laughs> yeah. There's there's some about it. I mean, it might not be a good smell to everyone, but there's most certainly someone out there that's like smelling it and then they're they're smoking it. It's just like, oh my god, this is actually a good combination. Like some of these strains <laughs> we're starting to find now, you know, like potty mouth, which we recently released on the on the. It smells like almost like a a baby's mouth after eating his food. You know, after like a few days without, you know, uh, brushing your teeth, it's almost like a rotten smell, but you smoke and you're like, that's delicious. You know? so, <laughs> so transitioning that that conversation to this right here, Tommy, this right here comes from your collection. And I get it. Oh, you are good. a connoisseur much more yeah. like you understand good flower. You've smoked so many flowers in your day, much more over a grower itself. But I have a few questions for you about this, if, if that's cool with you. Sure. sure. So was it always a plan for you at some point to come out with your own collection of weed that you knew was good and the world was going to respect? Or was this something that kind of just came out of randomly? Like, how did this happen for you to release Tommy Chong's collection? We, uh, again, you know, uh, when the weed got legal, we all licked our lips and said, oh, boy, we're, we're going to make it here. The Canadian government passed a law saying you can't use uh, the celebrities, but that's okay. Uh, the states, wow. you know, we can get away with it here. Uh, yeah, what we did, we had people, quite a few people actually, uh, start 
trying to uh, court us, you know, to to use the name and everything. But we ended up with Jonathan Black, who uh, who's taking us uh, public eventually. Mm-hmm. And, and we're going to be, we have our own grows. We're eventually going to have our own stores. We're eventually going to have, we're going to, take over the, the the whole industry if they allow us to you know because, Heck yes dude because someone needs it you know everybody yeah. worries about mom and pops uh, the, you know the little grows and that well you can't Here, here's what happens in this world uh it's called uh, junior uh, like the hockey leagues you know there's yeah. peewee midget uh, junior and then adult and then pros you know, well, we've gone through all the midgets and the, the, the other things. Now we're into the pros. And anytime you deal with the pros, you're going to get the best of the best taking care of everything. And so big business really is the best of the best. Gotcha. Now, big business for a while used to be, say, soybeans or, or, or corn or, you know, during the ethanol thing was mm-hmm. corn but right now we're coming into hemp we're coming into right. cannabis because this plant again is so magical and now what i want to do and that's what i am i'm doing is i'm connecting with certain growers nice and and i'm going to be using these certain growers as a boutique tommy chong special you know, Beautiful. so that so that it's the upper echelon and it, it will cost whatever the market will bear. Got you. Yes. Let's see, which see, is a lot of people interesting uh, times well, right now for that for that conversation, yeah. too. Yeah, because a lot of people, they, they 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 if you charge to them too much and even my wife's one of them, you know, she, oh, that's too much. That's too much. It's only too much for those that don't have enough. Mm-hmm. It's never too much for those that have more than enough. Right. And, and, and charging the appropriate amount for a product, especially as good as, as what we got, mm-hmm. is, is totally acceptable. Gotcha. Totally acceptable. Because yes. there's enough for the ones that can only afford that, there's a whole world out here I and, totally and there's a whole that. world of free. You want to even free, you want to grow it yourself. You don't want to pay a penny. You know, it, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. But if someone's taken the time and the energy and the research and the trial and error and comes up with something that's, that is worth gold, then pay them gold. And, and if you want to talk shit about them, that's your, that's your problem. No, and you're completely you're completely right on that. And and we can tell from this, like we sent this to lab actually, just to even see again. This is the the Mendocino skunk, right? From Paradise Seed. Yeah. This is from the Tommy Chong collection. This came back as, as a skunk, I would have assumed like 15%. I would have been happy. It's a classic strain. 15% will be like fucking soaked on. Dude, this came back at 23% cannabinoids, 19% THC. I have this seed to harvest from them. This little sucker was a seed growing up to the point it's at now. So clearly you got like the, the quality is there. And here on the channel, we show everything from the newest grower who doesn't have a budget to someone who is producing, who does have the budget, who who does have the expendable income to be able to play with certain different level of things. Yeah. So what I love about this is you guys have found a beautiful middle place. Like, there's a great story behind this because we have a connoisseur yourself who's approved this. And I have, as a grower, approving this right now. You're going to see the episode soon, Tommy. You're going to love it. This is really well done. So what are some of the things that you look at as a connoisseur when you're assessing a cannabis? You're like, okay, I might want to add this to the collection. I might want to work with this. I might want to work with this grower. What are some of the things that you look for? Well, the, the general health, more than anything, the size, the general health. The uh, the uh, the strength too of the bud itself, you know, uh, some of the 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 stems in that can be very spindly, yes, you know, yes. and very brittle, you know, and that that's meant to be uh, discarded, you yes. know. But when okay. when they grow up strong and healthy and and you can tell them <laughs> they're fighting for their their, their <laughs> share of, 
Okay, Survival of the see. fittest out there. You're yeah, picking the let fittest. Me, let me get up there. Let me get up there. <laughs> no and, doubt. And it's, a, it's a general appearance. And then you look where it was growing, you know? Right. Uh, I was in, like I said, I was in Greece uh, two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the food is incredible. The grapes are unbelievable. The, the, the olive trees are all so delicious. Why? They're all, the whole Greek islands was used to be a, a volcanic right. area. You know, yeah. all the, all islands are mountaintops, basically. And most of the mountaintops are from a, a volcanic chain. And so all that m mineral, that good mineral that the plants need is in the Greek islands at the Beautiful. top of that mountain. Beautiful. And and I saw grapes there, man, all. Oh. Yeah, you see grapevines. They they look so phony, man. That I thought some artist kind of made them and put them there. They were <laughs> no real grapes, man. Wow. Oh, and 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 then we when we had the food there in, in the restaurant, and we're out there. It, it was in Crete, the island of Crete. The food, oh, was so good. Oh, and all it is is fresh. Fresh cut, real food. Fresh olive, fresh olive oil, fresh oh. everything. That was it. Oh, oh my god, god. dude! You, you're giving me the munchies right now, Tommy. You gave me the munchies <laughs> hardcore, dude. And we're getting to the closing in here. We got seven minutes left. I want to respect your time and make sure we get off here at sure. early time. So, I'm gonna move into one question. I think you're absolutely gonna love this. But before I do, I got a quick question for you, sure. Tommy. You like I've heard so many interviews and one of the main questions that always comes up is like, who is the coolest person you ever smoked weed with? Or what was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, what was the coolest smoke session? So instead of me asking you that, can I ask you, can I add to my list? One of the coolest people I ever smoked weed with was Tommy Chong. Sure, absolutely. Light I'm lighting up, up brother. This is your Mendocino skunk right here. I'm about to spark it up for you, brother. This is your selection. We're going to add in one or two more questions before we end this, but I'm adding this right here to the actual. I'm actually going to cross it off the bucket list. I've had this written down since I was 16. I've seen your fucking movie. I was like, one day I'm going to meet him. Not only that, here I am smoking a doobie with him. So before we get to this question, guys, appreciate this moment as Homegrow TV, Dakota Sparks a Doobie with Tommy Chomp. Mm -hmm. And it burns very well. And it has such a classic taste, bro. For growers like myself who want to know what the classics were like, who want to know what land races were like, or what the actual skunk was like, this Mendocino skunk from Chong Selection is really fucking good, guys. Wow. I'm so glad I, to I'm glad you got it. Dude, I can't wait to send you the episode, Tommy, because I'm gonna send it to you. I'm not gonna say anything now, but I have a feeling in a few weeks. You're just going to be shocked and be like, what was that guy's name again that I did the interview with? Because this fucking episode is <laughs> unreal. And I got to reach out to him to do a part two. So if it's good, we got to do a part two. If it's not, we'll meet each other at some point soon. But I have a feeling you're really going to like the episode, Tommy. We brought this sucker from seed to harvest and we got beautiful results. So I'm thanks glad you. you did, man. No, you're welcome. You're more than welcome, man. And I'm, I'm sitting here salivating. Oh, I want some of that. Like you said, man, the mind's a powerful thing. Even <laughs> just us talking about it and you seeing it, your mind's already realizing and remembering what oh, the yeah. Mendocino skunk is. I can like. taste it. I can taste it, though. <laughs> oh. Oh. So, Tommy, mm. this one's right up your alley, brother. As someone who has been creating content in cannabis during the time when this shit was fucking illegal to grow in your house, to do stuff about. Now we're living in times where Homegrow TV, my channel, we, re we receive strikes from YouTube where they say, you can't post this. My friends' YouTube accounts are getting shut down like Dude Grows. They got shut down. A few other friends are getting shut down. So we're living in a content prohibition, but this is nothing new to you. So please share some stories of from you from the Holly, from the movies to the comedy shows to the music. What were some of the the restrictions or roadblocks that you had to face as a content creator in those times? Well, first of all, look at uh, Saturday Night Live. <clears throat> Saturday Night Live started hating uh, Cheech and Chong right from their inception because uh, we had two fans on the show, Aykroyd and uh, Belushi. 
and they were big Cheech and Chong fans. And so whenever they, those two would be on TV, Cheech and Chong style humor would creep in to the okay. point where they had to do it. And Lauren Michaels hated us still to this day. And years went by. We've never been asked to be on the show, but we got so popular that they had two actors play Cheech and Chong on their show. And to wow. me, that was the most chicken shit bullshit thing ever because you got Cheech and Chong sitting in the audience waiting for their uh, for their uh, uh, invitation to be on the show, wow. either as a guest or or as or even in the audience or or as a host, because we started all that stuff. You know, if it wasn't for us, there wouldn't have been a Aykroyd or of course or, or a Belushi or or Howard Stern even. Howard right. Stern was was in his basement listening to the radio, and he and he come across the Cheech and Chong uh, record. And next thing you know, he's the hottest guy on radio and he owes it all to Cheech and Chong. No doubt. And so, so we got, uh, I, I, I'll give kudos to uh, Dick Clark. Dick Clark, uh, one time, he wanted us on the show. And he, and, and I, I told Dick uh, and everybody, I said, you know, we're going to be a little crazy, so be prepared for it. And Dick loved it. He said, oh, great. Yeah. That's what he wanted. <laughs> so, so when we had to do Raider Record, you can look it up somewhere. Uh, when we Raider Record, you know, uh, I said, I'll tell you what I think of that. And I took a chain of beat. I killed the record. Then I wrecked the set. You know, I just, just uh -huh. went crazy on, on the, on the, ten, on the Dick Clark's uh, American Bandstand set. And, uh, and it would made history. But, it gave us a bad wow. name right. and, and in the industry. And, and like I said, with Lauren Michaels, to this day, he, he he's forced to admit, but yet, you know, they, they're, they're elitist. That's all I got to say. Yeah. They're, they're just no, elitist no. and racist. Beautiful. Bro, wow. What a fucking story, man. I can't wait for part two. When you see the episode, you're like, this is so amazing. I got to do part two. We got to do that. So <laughs> to close this out really quickly, one piece of advice for the future Tommy Chong's of the world, for people like Homegrow TV, for the next upcoming breed of people creating content in this space we call cannabis, a little line of advice for us creators. Find the humor. Find the humor. That's all. Find the humor. Nailed Whatever it. comes your way, find the humor. Now, don't always say it out loud. You gotta, you gotta watch your tongue. But when you come across a situation, a lot of times you say it out loud and you get in trouble. But if you find the humor, got you. And no matter what it is, like what if, uh, my great example was uh, when Saddam Hussein was being executed. Yeah, he was being hung and he had a heckler uh -huh. yelling at him. And Saddam says, watch, I'm going to show you how a real man dies. Yeah. <laughs> he shot that guy right up, man. <laughs> and he died, but he got the last word in, man. <laughs> no shit. Wow. <laughs> Tell me, brother. Oh, my God. You're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing the time. Really quick, before we leave, I'm going to throw it up on the screen just so we know the newest product that you just released so we get to see as fans of everything you do. Here we got them. It's Cheech and Chong Cruise. Bro, I'm going to be Cruise Chews. Oh, they're cruise called Chews. Cruise Chews. I'm going on a Cruise Chews real soon, Chong. <laughs> much love, brother. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time for showing up here tonight, brother. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care now. Talk soon. Much love.